A quick note before we start this presentation. The purpose of this tutorial is to satisfy the curiosity of some technically minded individuals. If you're going to use Macintosh OS X for anything other than experimentation, we recommend that you purchase an actual license from Apple. iNet does not endorse software piracy. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of iNet's Technology Report. Today on the program, we're going to be doing a bit of hacking. No, we're not going to be doing any hacking. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking advantage of someone else's hacking skills. So, are you ready to dive into the exciting world of OS X86? Alright, so the first question you're probably asking is what the hell is OS X86? Well, basically what it is, it's a project that exists to put Mac on other computers. You might be thinking, what the hell? Putting an Apple operating system on a non-Mac? Well, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going, going to be making a homebrew Mac out of a regular PC. So, where do you get one of these funky DVD images, might you be asking? Well, just go to your favorite BitTorrent site, and there'll be many OS X86 10.4 pre-patched DVDs. 10.5 is already out, but uh, many of them aren't compatible with a lot of PCs. So, let's fire up the Pirate Bay and see what we can come up with. This one looks good. Alright, so now that we've found a good torrent, we can go ahead and download it. Use a Zerus or uTorrent, or another BitTorrent client if you would prefer. Once the ISO is downloaded, you can burn it to a DVD using Nero or ImageBurn, or another DVD burning program, whatever you like. The result is going to be this. A patched version of Macintosh OS 10.4 or 10.5 that's going to run on regular PC hardware. Okay, so now you want to restart your computer and uh, make sure when you shut down that you're going to boot up again from CD. You do that by going into your BIOS, which should pop up in a minute here. So yeah, I've got it set up when I press F12, it gives me a multi-boot menu. You might have to go into your BIOS and set it to boot automatically from CD or whatever. Don't forget to pop in the DVD-ROM, which I almost forgot to do. So yeah, go down, select your CD-ROM drive, press Enter. Alright, so after a few minutes, about five minutes of waiting at the grey apple screen, you should see this. The language selection screen, so select English or whatever language you're going to be installing Mac in, and click Next. It'll then bring you up to the Preparing for Installation screen, which should last for about 45 seconds or so. Alright, so this is the next screen you should see, the Welcome to the Mac installer. Click Continue, accept the license agreement on the next page, and uh, that should bring you now to this screen. Yours is going to be a bit different in the sense that it won't be showing any partitions or hard drives. Do not panic. This only means that your hard drive hasn't been partitioned to accept Mac OS X yet. All you've got to do is go to Utilities in the white taskbar at the top of the screen, select Disk Utility, and uh, it should bring up the Disk Utility screen with um, partitions on your hard drive listed down the side. Select your disk, go to the Partition tab, and uh, click from Volume Scheme, click One Partition and OK. What this is going to do is it's going to destroy all data on your hard drive, so you want to make sure you can back up everything before you continue. You will be able to reinstall Linux or Windows or whatever you want after you install Macintosh as a dual boot situation. Unfortunately, we have to destroy all data before we go ahead. Okay, the next screen you're going to get to is going to say something like Easy Installation. You don't want that. You're going to want to click Customize in the uh, lower right-hand corner of the screen. And uh, this is when you choose to install optional drivers depending on your CPU type. So, many Mac disks are going to have things like Intel or AMD patches. You do not want to install both of them. You're going to want to install either the Intel or AMD patches depending on your processor type. You also have to find out if your processor supports SSE2 or SSE3 and install the appropriate patches. Once you've selected them, go ahead and click Install. The Mac uh, installer should check your installation DVD and then go ahead and install it on your hard drive. Alright, so the Mac installation should take about half an hour, depending on how fast your system is. Once it's done, go ahead, reboot, and uh, you'll see the default Mac booting up screen. 
After a while, it'll bring you into the Welcome to Mac OS 10.4 or 10.5 video. Go ahead, set up your computer using whatever username and password you want. And uh, then, as you wish, you can install Linux, uh, Windows, or whatever. Make sure you uh, resize your Mac partition. And don't worry, it won't destroy anything. Depending on what operating system you're using to boot, uh, you're going to have to modify your boot, boot settings, scrub loader, whatever you've got, uh, to boot into Mac OS X. And uh, there are many forums on the internet that can help you out with that. Lastly, I just want to mention the OS X86 page, which provides useful information on getting drivers for things like wireless, sound, uh, or Ethernet. It's uh, Just go for a Google search, go OS X86 forums, and they'll have answers to almost any of your questions. They've got lists of supported hardware types, supported software, what you can use, what you can't use. And that's all we've got for this edition of Tech Report. So long, and stay hacking.